Welcome back everyone. We're finally getting some upgrades to the video production setup around here. A friend of mine was nice enough to give me this bargain model PC here, which is still a fair step up from the old performance behemoth there that I was using, the F1 64X2 6400. Quite high performance in its day, uh, 2008, but by comparison, I might as well have a coal fire in my living room. Now this being one of those bargain things is one of those FM2 Plus motherboards that uh, uses the APU processors and it comes with the A4-6300. And today I'll be maxing out that board with this fabulous bargain, the X4-845 for $66 with cooler. It should be about two and a half times the performance of the one that's in there. And that's not only because being concerned about power consumption is the right thing to do, but that it more immediately affects us here, as this is an almost entirely solar-powered channel. With this compartment full of batteries. And when those get too low, we have to flip the switch, thereby admitting defeat. And I'll have to go cry in the corner. Now here you can see the simplified performance levels of the three processors we're talking about here. On the left, the old machine and in the middle my current processor in the new machine and on the right the one we'll be upgrading to today and you can see uh, also how much more efficient the new ones are at a maximum of 65 watts now, while these numbers are not the whole story when selecting a CPU they should be a pretty accurate comparison for me between the three and the performance that I'm going to get. As all that I am really concerned about is editing and rendering, mostly the rendering of video. And since this is a no budget channel, I'm using Blender here, which maybe does not do the best job of fully utilizing the CPU cores. But um, it seems to be around the same utilization percentage from the old uh, Athlon 64 to this new one. And we'll see if that remains true on the X4 here. So I'm going to run a test before and after my processor upgrade here and just see how long it takes to render this project that I've already rendered before and how the processor cores are utilized during that with the you know, resource monitor and I will also hook the computer power through a meter and see how much power the machine uses for the entire project before and after All right, I've got my cheap power measurement set up here. And here it is at idle. This is just the computer itself, not the monitors or any other accessories. And it's wandering around 45 watts normally. Of course, it seems to be doing something now since I started the video. But anyway, absolute idle is around 45 watts. Here with the A4-6300 still in it. And I have a 750 Ti graphics card in there. And 8 gig of some slow-end RAM. I believe it's about 1300 megahertz. 
Now I've got my video project for the test loaded up here. This is the 93 Civic drive axle replacement video I just did. And we're using Blender to render this and encode it to H.264. This is 1080p. All right, I have zeroed out the energy meter and begun to render. And we're using about 83 watts. That's not a whole lot more. And we'll see how long this takes and how much power it uses. And then another thing of note here is that Blender only seems to use about 60% of the total CPU. It is split evenly across the two cores pretty much and it did about the same thing with the old old processor as well so we'll see what happens with that with the new quad core and if anybody knows of a way to improve this specific situation i'd love to hear it so with the old a4 6300 processor it took an hour and two minutes to complete that project and consumed 85 watt hours. Now I'll remove that processor and install the new X4845 with cooler, which comes pre-slathered with a nice even coat of heatsink compound, except for the spot where I touched it with my finger, not realizing that it had arrived pre-slathered. So I'll just add some of my own. And re-slather that. So, I will unplug the old cooler from the motherboard, flip this lever, release the tension, that in first and the other one and lift it off. Then there's the lever on the processor socket and out it comes. Now in with the new processor Checking for the alignment features. It should drop right in. And you clamp it down. Ordinarily, this would be where you slather your processor with heatsink compound. But in our case, the cooler has arrived pre-slathered. So, you take your pre-slathered cooler, hook this side of this tensioning bar, and then the side with the lever on it. It shouldn't be tremendously difficult. that. There should be a little resistance, but not that much resistance. clamping. It should be on there pretty firmly. 
you'll still be able to wiggle it a bit. That's about right. And plug in the fan connector. Then I'll go ahead and reconnect the power. And turn it on to verify operation. Now I can put the cover on. And of course now the BIOS wants some attention. And over here, it has already accurately identified our new processor. So it might not have to do anything other than to save and exit. I'll try that. seems to be on its way. And we're right in. Of course it had to change the screen resolution for a moment to rearrange my icons. But let's have a look at the resources. Where we now have four cores. That's a good sign. Here are the idle power is virtually the same, if not a little bit lower. Our idle seemed to be around 45 watts before. And of course it keeps spiking there because it's always up to something. So now I will reset the energy meter and start the same project rendering. Okay, there is similar power consumption during rendering few watts more, but while all four cores are being used fairly evenly, not nearly all the way. Our processor utilization percentage-wise has decreased. They're now using about 40% of the processor, and so for this one application, we're not going to get the dramatic improvement that I was after. Perhaps if this was a more complicated edit, the processor could be further utilized. But I try to avoid that. And so it looks like the way to take advantage of this new processing power is that I will be able to work on the next project while one is rendering without a decrease in performance. Or, from the look of it, I could probably render two projects at once. I'll try that next. Yes, that's hardly an improvement at all. Used exactly the same amount of power, and just did it a few minutes faster. Clearly, I need to fiddle with some settings. Well, I fiddled with every setting I could find, but could not make the slightest difference to the CPU utilization with one blender. So apparently, Blender is not a good program for fully utilizing your CPU with one render. But what I've got going on here is two renders. Each one going the same speed as I used to do one render with the old processor and with about 75% uh, total CPU usage. That's with all the stuff going on in the background. Each blender is using about 30% evenly across all four cores. So I could probably even run another one with a slight performance decrease on each one. I could also render one thing and continue editing the next. And this doing two projects at once is also providing better bang for your watt as we are currently using around 110 watts versus the 85 for a single project. So while I did not get the kind of result I was hoping for in Blender, 
the Athlon X4845 is providing maximum performance and efficiency for the cheapskate. So I'll leave this one here for now and I will continue to test this processor with some other video editors in the future. And if you found any of this interesting, please don't forget to like and comment and subscribe and all that jazz. Thanks for watching.